All right. Well, welcome everyone. We have people joining us from all over California. And often we have people um, from outside of California as well. All are welcome. Great to see all of you. Thank you for being here with us. I see some familiar names, some new names. Great to see all of you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> yes, I did see Mark from Cupertino, Adam. Adam pointed out in the chat. Awesome. Excellent. Met everyone here. So great to see all of you. Well, this continues our webinar series, Learning with AI, Learning About AI, sponsored uh, or hosted, I should say, by California Department of Education. As you are joining us, I'd love for you to introduce yourself in the chat and let us know, how do you use AI to increase your productivity? And if you don't yet, after today, I bet you will because that's what this is all about, boosting our efficiency. So introduce yourself, let us know how you use AI. I have um, quite a few ways that I use AI to increase my productivity. I used to have a, um, oh, haven't used AI yet. You are in the right place. You are going to learn some great ways to, uh, to help uh, automate some things in your life that you don't wanna do. Okay, so Trisha, looking for ideas for designing trainings for teachers. Excellent, I think um, both Adam and Amanda, our speakers, will have some good ideas for you. Awesome. Uh, teaching it to future teachers, great, great. All right. Using it for editing emails, excellent. I love it, absolutely. <clears throat> Different reading levels, that's a great one. Students with disabilities, um, helping rewrite sentences. Um, and you'll see that in February, we are having a um, an AI session. Uh, our webinar will be about accessibility and personalization. So we'll do a lot of great stuff with that as well. Excellent. Thank you all for sharing. Um, you can continue to share in the chat if you'd like. We are so excited that you are here and on a Monday afternoon. Uh, if you have not already seen the CDE AI guidance, I encourage you to check it out. Um, this is our website is at bit.ly CDE underscore AI. And all of the resources that are mentioned here tonight will be sent to you in an email in the future as well. All right. So today, what we're really going to focus on is how AI can help us boost efficiency for us as teachers, perhaps for students as well. And so that's the um, focus of today. But this entire series is based on our CDE guidance, which is learning with AI and learning about AI. And so we uh, absolutely call for our educators and students to safely find ways to learn with AI and to learn about AI as well. And uh, if you're new to our webinar series, you will receive uh, re links to all of the recordings from the past um, uh, in the email that will follow this in a couple of days as well. So as far as our learning with AI, why? Why do we want to learn with AI? Well, one of the reasons that we want to focus on is because it can help us a lot with planning. It can help us a lot with our workflow. There's a lot of things. I don't know about any of you, but as an educator, I don't think I've ever had more time than I need. Does anyone have plenty and plenty of time? So what we want to do is find ways that we can maximize those things that we really do want to do. So how's the AI impacting the present? So I just decided to go straight to the AI. And so I went to ChatGPT and I asked how my educators and students utilize AI to boost efficiency. And I got a lot of answers here. Personalized learning, automated grading, adaptive learning platforms, all sorts of things in here. And I, you can see uh, this was ChatGPT. Those that are not have not used AI before actually... Um, 
Adam or Amanda can drop in some links to get you started if you'd like. Um, for ChatGPT, that's the one I have right here. Open up. Uh, and then this one, I believe, was Claude. Does that look like Claude, Adam, on the right? Well, I think it was Claude AI. Um... Yeah, that does look like Claude. I think it was Claude. So that's another uh, chat bot that you can use as well, um, Claude.ai, and uh, gave me some similar answers. But we want to, uh, we'll be hearing from some great speakers in a moment. Um, they're authors and educators and coaches. Um, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about how AI has eased my pain points. If you knew me before, uh, gosh, two weeks ago, you would notice that my calendar and my to-do lists were just super ridiculous and overwhelming. Adam, you've seen my uh, to-do list. Would you agree my paper to-do lists? And so the, I I would spend so much time trying to prioritize tasks. And then I'd prioritize these tasks. And, and whenever I'd have extra time, I would do these tasks. And then a new thing would come in. And I thought, well, where does that one go? So now I use something I actually do pay for a program called Motion that um, aligns my calendars with all of my tasks. And I tell it when it needs to be done and if it's how long it's going to take. And it's incredible. It's been a game changer. Like my stress level um, has gone down a lot. I also, if you look at this center image, I uh, don't consider myself a great visual artist. And so, you know, back in the day, we used to just look for images for our um, presentations and for our students um, on Google. We didn't find very great ones. Maybe we had something particular in mind. I'm not going to be able to draw that very quickly, very efficiently, but there are some text to image generators that'll do a great job. The other thing I love to use AI for is analyzing data and looking for trends. So word clouds are good for this. I also took um, a whole bunch of input that we had um, at a statewide convening of a bunch of individuals talking about computer science credentialing. And we needed to summarize all of this. And there was so much data. And I thought, how am I going to do this? Because it wasn't like a survey. It wasn't quantitative data, right? So I took all of that, put it into ChatGPT and said, tell me the trends. So super helpful, but that's just my story. We want to hear from um, our speakers. Our first speaker here is uh, Adam Juarez from Tulare County Office of Education, and uh, he's also a, a co-author of The Complete Ed Tech Coach and um, has been in education for um, a few years. I'm going to go ahead and unshare my screen, Adam, if you want to take over and uh, show us some things that'll help us as teachers, as we are trying to make our lives a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get to the right one here. Too many tasks, too many things <laughs> open here. You need an AI for that. <laughs> That's right, huh? All right, let's see. Did everybody see my screen? We see it. We good? All right. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, my name's Adam Wattis. I'm the uh, EdTech Integrated Studies Consultant here at Tulare Office of Education out here in rural Central California. And I'm gonna spend a few minutes today showing you how you can use AI to boost your, your workflow and efficiency, both for you and your students. Uh, so we we'll go ahead and do a quick little brief overview of my experience. So what this allows you to do with the AI, I know we have some, uh, some newbies in the room, I'm, I'm, you're in the right place. Uh, I was looking at the chat earlier, and a uh, good friend, Mark Cupertino, said the best way to learn is just by playing with, playing around with AI, just in the, uh, in the see, see, see what you, what you can come up with. That's really how I learned. I, I didn't take any course. I just kind of trial and error and develop my own workflow and system. And honestly, that's that was the best way for me to really apply this and use it uh, efficiently uh, for my job. So what it does, it supercharges your your teacher's superpowers. It helps you personalize learning materials and lessons for all learners. I'll show you some, a uh, couple specific examples. This can also help you close the equity gap. As you, if, if, as a teacher, if you are familiar with with AI, um, then your kids are obviously going to eventually get their hands on it. So we need to be familiar with it and start training our kids for that future, which will be an AI-driven future. If we don't prepare them for that future and teach them how to use it responsibly, all they're ever going to use it for is for evil and not for good. And we're not going to be preparing them for that future marketplace. So again, uh, you start by getting yourself comfortable and familiar with it. Uh, again, we want to improve productivity and enhance your workflow. 
Um, this helps with equi equitable grading. So again, um, I, I, will, I will demonstrate this uh, particularly, but you can actually use your own rubrics and then grade things with using AI based off your rubrics much quicker and more efficiently than ever before. You still have to do to vet all of the outputs that it give you. That's probably the most important thing to do with AI is vet everything, but it will give you time back. Uh, I'm going to show you in a few minutes something um, that would have taken me four days that I can then do in an hour. So it gives you time back. You go from days to hours, hours to minutes. I'm not making this up. It really does uh, enhance your workflow. Um, it allows you to not have to do all the grunt rote work. It gives you time back for more of the thinking and creative process. And also the AI can help you very quickly and efficiently um, communicate with uh, parents and, and stakeholders. Um, I've had those times where I need to craft an email or a response to a parent who may not be happy with me, and the AI can help me say it in a, a, a very clear yet professional tone that doesn't come across too crass or anything uh, that definitely won't get, get me in trouble. So uh, definitely a, it will supercharge your teacher's superpowers. So I, I want, before we jump in, I want, I want to start, uh, start with this little graphic here that um, when I first started learning about AI, um, I was reminded of the movie Hidden Figures and how the, in the middle of that movie, uh, the IBM computer, which was the size of a classroom, was plopped into uh, the human, uh, uh, into the NASA program. And uh, the human computers who did the calculations, as you see in this movie, they could have said, no, I'm going to bury my head in the sand. I'm not going to use this new computer. I'm just going to use the chalkboard. They embraced it. They learned how to use it, and they became even much more efficient because of it. It's super power. Uh, it supercharged their skills. So I think that's a great, uh, and that movie is a great kind of metaphor for uh, what we want uh, AI to do for us. So let's take a look here at the beginning of, uh, of my prompt engineering journey. If you're a newbie to the AI world, prompt engineering in a nutshell, uh, when you're a prompt engineer, you're someone who, know, who knows how to uh, responsively and productively use AI. You craft prompts. You're it's what the prompt is what you enter into the AI in order to get a, an output that you uh, uh, are, are looking to, to achieve. And it may take you four or five times to, to get that prompt exactly the way you want, so it gives you the output, but that process is called prompt engineering. So again, as I alluded to earlier, um, prompt engineering, and when, once you develop your system and your workflow we, with the AI, uh, what took you days will now come to hours, what took you hours will, uh, will only take mere minutes. And really, I'm, I'm not making this up. It sounds like I'm selling snake oil, uh, but definitely this is the, uh, um, has been my experience. So um, way back in the last spring, when I was taking this beginning journey of AI, of really honing my prompt engineering skills, um, I put on my history teacher hat. I taught history for over 17 years. And one of the biggest things, uh, struggles that I had was really unpacking standards. Yes, I kind of knew the standards, but how could I unpack them so I, I could really use them more uh, innovative and productive ways? Uh, so what I did, just I took, a, uh, I had a few office days here where I just took my time. I said, you know what? How can ChatGPT help me break these standards down and create uh, materials that are that are personalized um, for for English learners and and uh, stu students um, um, in the SPED program? How could I create DOK level appropriate questions, and activities that are aligned to specific standards? I have the brain capacity to do this but the AI helps me do this much more quickly and efficiently. Help me generate um, activities for mastery, bullet points or presentations. Uh, help me do uh, research when I'm looking for primary sources. Uh, help me develop key vocabulary that all of this is aligned to specific content standards. All things that I have the skills to do that um, what you see here on the slide here, all those bullets there would have taken me four days before AI. I could, once I honed my prompt, my, my prompt engineering skills, and have my workflow down, I could do all of that, which you see there in less than an hour. It, it really gave me a lot of time back and I was really just amazed at how much more efficient it made me. And it helped me also create custom learning materials for their unique student, uh, their unique needs. And I actually created rubrics that helped provide a targeted feedback. So enough with, with the uh, talking about, let's go ahead and take a look at what I did. Again, this was from months ago. My, my workflow probably would have changed. I might've done things differently, but this is my maiden voyage here. And of course, it's going to take forever to. This is great, Adam, because uh, it 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 almost sounds too good to be true. So we're, I'm excited that you will be uh, sharing with us exactly what this looks like. Sometimes, of course, you know AI is dependent on the internet. So Let's you know, see if I can <laughs> speed this up here. The, it is spinning. Close so those tabs, right? 
Yeah, too many tabs open here. Let's see if I can uh, find this a little bit quicker here. Here we go. Hopefully, there we go. So, oh, oh no, it finally did. <laughs> it finally did pop up there. All right, here we go. So this is what I, I, I officially call it the AI History Project. And everything you see here was all helped me created through AI. Uh, you see a lot of rubrics that, that I created. But, but what I did, I, I didn't finish the whole thing, but I did start by going through each of the standards. Again, I taught high school history. So I started with... Uh, with uh, the 11th grade history standards, and I started breaking them down by substandard um, or the whole overarching standards. So I'm going to go look at the whole overarching standard here, 11.1 um, from the California history standards. And this is a, I forget, let's see, a 10 page document that I was able to create in less than an hour. Once I honed Honed my skills and got my workflow, my prompting down, I was able to create this. So, what I did, here's the actual standard. And using ChatGPT, I have a, uh, I have a, a another doc with a series of prompts um, that I would just kind of repeat over and over. And first thing I wanted to do was a, a my prompt read like this: what, uh, Based on this standard here, what is a give me a two paragraph, a two paragraph summary of what students are expected to know to show mastery of that standard. And I went in there and it, it spit out this nice little two paragraphs here. Again, I had to vet it. I using my content knowledge of, of US history to make sure that it, there's no mistakes in there. I did probably change a couple things, but this gives me, um, as I'm working with other teachers planning for that, we, we can focus on these things and what they're expected to know. And then from there, I took this actual, I took this actual two paragraph summary of student expectations and had it write an 800 word, um, summary of that standard and I actually my my prompt was to make it read like a narrative and I learned from trial and error in my prompt I also had to um I had to uh put in there that I uh don't make it do, do not add bullets because it would give me a bulleted list I wanted it to read like a narrative so 800 word reads like a narrative no bullets based off of this um uh this summary I'm sorry this uh, summary of expectations and it's summarized so that this this could be like almost um, something I could print out and give to the students as this is your base of what you're going to be learning as you uh, work toward mastering the standard. Uh, from there, I took the same uh, uh, content standard here, 11.1, and my next prompt was I asked it, give me a, a four ways students can show mastery of the standard. Two, uh, two options must include tech, two must be only paper and pencil. Uh, a lot of this are things that I could have thought of myself, but it uh, came up very quickly with these four. And then for each one, we used in the uh, chat GPT, I was able to uh, design rubrics to to um, uh, to evaluate students when I give them voice and choice. I have individual rubrics here for each each one. I also have a general one. So if I don't want to have to use four different rubrics, one that kind of kind of covers them all, I created one of those as well. Again, uh, crafting the prompt using chat GPT. Uh, from there, again, uh, I have uh, learned a lot more uh, AI platforms since then. Um, but what I uh, I did, I asked it based on that standard to create a slides presentation um, with uh, four to five bullet brief bullets per slide, and I was able to then put it into uh, I use Canva to help me build the slides. And if I click on here, this is the slides that uh, using ChatGPT the information I, I I put it in Canva, and I was able to create a kind of master slide deck to teach. That standard, all these for all these uh, uh, information that you see here are all things that I was able to generate with ChatGPT. Again, I vetted everything. I had to go through through check all the bullets, make sure it was aligned to that standard and not giving me fake news, which uh, AI can do. So again, we have to vet everything. From there, I use that same content standard, and my prompt went something like this: uh, Give me five primary sources. A students would will have to study to show mastery of this standard. And I paste in the standard and it gives me five uh, ones that, again, things I could have thought of, but it, it also give me, a, ex, give me an explanation of how it aligns to that standard. And simply all I did was do a quick Google search for uh, free uh, PDFs online uh, of the uh, of each one that I could, that were student friendly. And I linked them here on my document. I uh, continue with that same content standard, copy and paste. I go based off this standard, give me the uh, top uh, 20 uh, vocabulary words uh, that um, uh, students will need to know to show mastery. The question in the chat here, the chat GPT created the slides, they didn't. So this time here, um, again, in my maiden voyage of prompt engineering, I had, um, I had the bullets created by chat GPT, and then I would then put them into 
uh, Canva and then downloaded them as Google Slides. Uh, I'm going to show you something else uh, uh, in a few minutes here that kind of uh, skips all that process. And this is before I learned a variety of, of other ones here, but that, that's a great question here. Adam, we have some uh, great questions. Oh, can I ask a couple questions yes. in the chat? Um, will you be yeah, sharing the the prompts that you used? Some people are asking for yes. the prompts. Yes, yeah, so when we're done here, I will. Okay. I will. Uh, I'll link them on the slides. I'll put my uh, my uh, prompt cheat sheet. Perfect. Awesome. And then the next question was, did uh, how did you get those slides created? So the question is, did ChatGPT create that, or how did you how did you get that to work? So it, it, there was uh, there's about three steps. First, I prompted with uh, ChatGPT to give me the bullets, and I copied those bullets into um, I had Canva kind of start the slides for me, and I I put those bullets into Canva, and from there I downloaded it as Google Slides. Um, I have a but that's way too many steps now because I've learned a lot more AI platforms that can skip a lot of those steps for me. So I'm actually going to show that here in a couple minutes. So great questions there. Um, so for vocabulary, I think, yeah, I gave the top 20 uh, vocabulary words that students would use. Um, and then I imported that into Quizlet. The, again, when I did this, Quizlet had not uh, integrated AI into their platform yet. And I had to, you know, import it in there. Now, as I'm going to show you in a minute, I, a lot of this I don't have to do anymore using ChatGPT. I can go right to Quizlet and create my study sets. Um, but here's where I think you get the best bang for your buck when I was using ChatGPT. As a classroom teacher, the thing I, I got dinged for the most was how I'm not getting into DOK's levels two and three. I'm sorry, three and four. I was good at one and two, and I could I could definitely use that poster I had in my room to align uh, my questions and activities to DOK levels. But ChatGPT allowed me to do it much quicker than I ever could have thought of. So my prompt was this, give me five DOK level one questions that would show mastery of this standard and three DOK level one uh, uh, activities that uh, align to that standard. And so what I did, I, I would do that for each DOK uh, level. So you see from here's level one, and as you scroll down through each DOK level, you can see that the rigor does in, increase. These are all things I could have done that would have taken me hours and hours, but instead I got I was done in minutes. And I would go through and again, as a responsible prompt engineer, I'm going to vet everything that it says in here uh, and make sure that it's uh, exactly what uh, I'm, I'm um, able to use and, and do it responsibly. So all the way through DOK level four, I was able to come up with these really cool activities and questions to ask to uh, really raise the rigor in my classroom. Um, going forward, um, me being a tech coach, I was really in, interested in seeing how ChatGPT can help me align each standard to the four C's. So it gave me some, like, some way students can engage with each four, each of the four C's and where technology fits organically if I was to just try to design a lesson. Again, and more of a history thing here is I also ask it based off of that content standard, my prompt was give me uh, a list of all the major uh, events in it for a timeline that students must know to master that standard. And, and it would give me things that I, I could have figured out myself, but then it got me to there very quickly. Um, additionally, I had also, I asked it for geographical locations um, for the mastery of that standard. So again, this took me a couple of days to develop my system, but once I had my system down, those document 10 pages, other ones were even longer. I could do all this work when creating rubrics and everything in less than an hour. And it really just kind of amazed me in how much much faster and more efficient I was able to work. Um, so I'm gonna leave you here with a few quick tips. Things have changed a lot since I went through that initial journey, but here are four real quick um, tips using um, uh, AI that you can really, uh, um, upgrade your workflow here. We're going to take a look at quizzes, Quizlet for vocabulary, Gamma for uh, slides uh, development, and collaboration uh, with your um, your colleagues using Notebook LM. So if we take a look, I'm going to skip here to Quizlet because that's where I do my vocabulary um, for students to do independent practice. But Quizlet has this new uh, AI feature here that when I start a, a study set, let's see, I'm going to just do it this way, a long way. Oops, there we go. And if I was to come here, create from notes, I can here paste in a bunch of text, maybe my own lecture notes. I can I can upload a file from a computer or even a Google Doc, and it will generate the the study sets for my uh, uh, almost instantly for my uh, um, 
for my class. I'm actually going to just go take a look at one that I've already already done. Let's see. Here's one that I did about uh, you know I pasted in notes for the Enlightenment and Revolution. This is the standard you study in history, and it, in in seconds it created this study set for me. All as simple as copying and pasting um, my uh, my notes in there, I was able to uh, to uh, generate this uh, right there. So let's see here. We have a question here. Does it give you resources that? Access that's a big concern for academia. Let's see. All right, Catherine got has answered that question. So again, you have in Quizlet for free. You have your AI um, tool here that I, I remember before AI was here. I would actually type in each word and definition, and it, or I would put it into a spreadsheet and I would upload it. And it, it was doable, but it took time. But the AI now does it so much quicker, and uh, there's even the AI the kids can actually act. Um, are able to use the QChat as a as a tutor, so it's pretty amazing here. Quiz is does uh, something very similar. When I'm going to create a quiz on Quiz is again Quiz lit Quiz is I it's kind of a of a tongue twister sometimes for me, but when you go here to create, when I create a quiz, oops, okay, I'm on a different account. That's why. All right, so right here. I can create from scratch by typing it myself. I can generate from text where I can I can do a, a, an actual prompt, an AI prompt, where it says here I can you know, give me a ten question quiz at the let's see, we'll say about the American Revolution. Let's say I'm gonna do this for fifth grade. And I'm just gonna do real quick, generate questions. And it's gonna actually come up with 10 questions and answers that I can use. Like I can select some subtopics. And we'll say here, uh, battles of the American Revolution. We'll add that in there. And it's going to use this AI magic to create the questions. And it's going to allow me to right here, show me what it's gonna be first. And I can vet the information. This, this all I used to do by hand. But now it's going to do it much quicker than I ever could before. And I might just take this and do a few edits, and it's giving me a huge head start. Uh, let's quit Quizlet. Uh, we'll take a real quickly here at Gamma. Gamma is one of my favorites. And I might have, let's see, have I used up all my Gammas? I may, I'm, on, I'm on the free version right now. So Gamma allows me to create, uh, to create uh, slides faster than ever before. And I'm going to create a presentation. So we'll say create a slide deck about the California missions for a fourth grade class. And what it'll do, it'll start with an outline to tell me this is what, what, you're, what it's going to be about. I can add, I can add stuff to it. And if I like it, Again, I'm all out of credits right now, so that's a it's a bad example for me right now on, on this account. Um, but um, with, once I hit continue, within a minute, it will give me a slide deck that I can use eight or nine slides, and with uh, high quality images and pretty accurate information. There's stuff you have to have to take away. You might have to edit. You might have to add stuff in there. But again, I, I like to say it's like running a marathon, except I'm starting now at mile 22 instead of, of mile zero. And it gives me that huge head start. So again, I don't want, I don't want to take uh, everyone's time. Um, we can, last thing we'll, we'll briefly go over is Notebook LM. This is free, re, just very recently added to Google. So what you can do with Notebook LM, let's see if I can find a good one here. So this is actually uh, a notebook that I'm using with my uh, my admin class. You can upload Google Docs and PDFs, and what the what the notebook LM does, uh, this be the, those those sources that you upload that becomes your uh, your data set. It's, it's instead of just looking at the whole internet, it's gonna it's gonna scan your data. So I have a couple of PDFs in here that I have here. Um, and I don't want to look at the whole what's online. I just want to look at those files. So instead of having to, to look through that those files itself, I can ask Notebook LM to answer certain questions based off of the text in these PDFs or Google Docs. So if I say here, give me a three sentence summary of the Frisk process. This is a, an admin thing here that I'm 
I am actually taking a class currently in learning and uh, so again, it'll, so right here, based off the documents that I have about this, this process, it gives me a, uh, a very quick um, a summary of it. I can ask text dependent questions here. So imagine that you are um, in a PLC and you're breaking down new curriculum and you guys all have your own notes about the curriculum. You guys can then upload this to a shared notebook and it can, you can ask for the, uh, the commonalities and, the, and our similarities and differences between your takeaways as you really dig into new curriculum and decide is this one that you want to use or maybe you're playing how you're going to use it so it could definitely be an amazing um, tool for collaboration so i'm going to stop sharing because i want to give time to amanda but uh it's probably like drinking water out of a fire hose for some of you i understand uh, i don't have a lot of time but i guess i get here talk about this all day um so well, thank you adam you your, uh, that was awesome ears. adam yeah, I we got some great comments in the chat. Go ahead, Amanda. No, I love your um, standards, taking standards and um, breaking them down into DOK levels. Yeah. I did have one question, Adam, because I don't remember the answer. Yes. Um, is L is the notebook LM available to students' accounts yet? Or is it only for um, uh, teacher not accounts? What, you know what? Actually, Mark from Cooper Theater might know that answer better than me. <laughs> I, I'm not in the Google world as much as I used to. Um, I believe it can be. It has to probably has to be turned on by uh, your domain admin. Uh, I, saw Mark I, I missed the question. Um, I I am trying to remember if Notebook LM is available to student accounts or just teachers. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, know, I know it's available on mine. I don't know if students can see it, and and I should know that because that's a <laughs> job. I, someone <laughs> in the chat says um, that it's blocked. I will say, even if it's not yet available, the technology is there. To you know, our CDE guidance really talks about safety for students and making sure we're FERPA compliant and such. If you're able to create a notebook LM for students based on the resources you want them to have, not the whole internet, that's a game changer. So, I mean, the technology's there. We're going to get to a place where this technology will be much more available in a safe way to students also. So that that was kind of why I asked that question. Um, if it's not here yet, it will be soon. The technology is definitely available. Adam, thank you so much. Um, there were requests for your prompt um, document. So please put that in the slides and we'll make sure to get that to everyone within the next couple of days um, or so when you get the email. And I'm so excited to introduce Amanda Fox, um, who I have uh, had the pleasure of uh, working with, um, having great ed tech conversations with. She's written a few books and she was the co-author of a book about AI in the classroom. So this is an absolutely perfect um, segue to uh, someone that can help us really go even deeper with uh, the way that we can use AI to help us as educators. So Amanda, go ahead and take it over, uh, take over the screen when you'd like. I'm just excited to be in the same webinar as, as Mark. I've uh, I've actually used um, some of his stuff. Stop, some of his stop quotes. it. <laughs> I, I am so excited. All right. Which, okay, you, you guys are seeing. We see it. We're good. All right, perfect. I'm just going to go back. Prepare to wield the power of well-crafted prompts to reduce your teacher workload and transform your classroom into an arena of excitement and knowledge acquisition. World of Prompt Craft unveils the secrets to designing prompts that harness the essence to inspire, challenge, and captivate your students. Dive into the concept of prompt crafting and its potential to revolutionize your teaching methodology. No matter your teaching experience, this session equips you with the tools to craft prompts that unlock a new level of educational achievement, all while deconstructing educational standards. Okay. So um, I had fun with, uh, with making that. Um, for those who are familiar with DID and Canva and Midjourney, I did like an AI app smash between the three of those to create. I did a blend to create like my headshot in the World of Warcraft uh, look. And then I had the avatar speak using DID, um, which is an avatar like speaking software, you can go in and generate your text and everything. Um, and if we have time, I'll get into how that was made and kind of go into it. But I'm, I'm going to give you some other ideas for how your students can use it. So uh, number one, I'm Amanda Fox, co-author of the AI Classroom, author of the Canva Classroom, Teaching Land, Markertown, and I have a few books in the works. 
So I'm excited about those. You can join the AI Classroom Facebook group if you haven't already. We have over 35,000 members and there's constantly good discourse going on in there. I'm not as active as I as I should have been or as I should be, but um, I'm getting back in the flow of, of being on top of social media. Um, also, last year we did Week of AI and it was a week-long event and there were 25 amazing speakers who talked about how to use AI in the classroom. And this was back of May of last year. So everyone, not that we aren't noobs now, but everyone was complete noobs. And um, if you're looking to get started, you're kind of coming in on everyone's getting started um, presentations. I'm Amanda Fox Stem on Twitter, and I'm just going to go ahead and skip skip all that. So with, uh, you know, November to 2022, the uh, chat GPT kind of broke the internet and everyone maybe not everyone immediately kind of jumped on the AI bandwagon, but uh, it definitely brought to light how ubiquitous AI has been in our daily lives. People started looking at AI um, more as a tool versus like a hidden tool that was in our lives. For example, Siri or Alexa, um, our self-driving cars, GPS. And when ChatGPT came out, this concept of prompt crafting also emerged, which is the skill of being able to ask AI the right questions in order to get the response that you need. Uh, and hopefully, as we go through this world of prompt crafting, we'll give you an acronym that will help you generate prompts um, as you move forward to, to get the output that you're looking for the first time, and also realizing that AI is a conversational tool, so we can continue to prompt and, and have it refine its output um, as we go along. So just uh, my slides, all of this is created in Canva, but this is actually Adobe Firefly generated image. And I'm gonna show a little bit of that um, later. So when I create slides for my classroom, I love using AI generative images, whether you use Mid Journey, which I, I do pay the $5.99 a month for that because it's more robust and I get more specialized images. So this image was done in Adobe Firefly though, and that's free. And we're gonna look at that in a second. So prompting. So in the AI classroom, Dan and I um, came up with this prep and edit uh, kind of acronym to help you guys pr or prep the machine. So prep, P is to prompt, introduce the question with a prompt. Um, R is to give it a role or a voice. Um, three is explicit instructions, and four is the parameters of how you want the answer to uh, to come out. And then, of course, there's the edit. So we have to evaluate for uh, language facts and structure, determine accuracy and corroborate the sources, because as Adam was saying earlier, ChatGPT and, and Mark, ChatGPT does not um, get the... Uh, oh, I, I, I just got distracted by Mark's comment. He Okay, he just said a lot of prompt engineering will move below the surface as better tools become available. Yes, and I am going to shift into that. So um, prompt engineering, like with all the educational tools that are coming out, um, Adam just showed you quizzes and um, was it Quizlet? What else? Uh, Gamma. So a lot of uh, prompt engineers are building these tools for you on the back end where the heavy duty prompting is there. For example, with Curapod, uh, if, if you don't know that, th th there's input fields to where you put in your grade, your topic, and um, your subject. And it will automatically generate an entire lesson for you because on the back end, um, the team at Curapod has actually done all the heavy, like, uh, base it's kind of like coding with words. So number one in, in prep is, here's some examples, create an academic quiz about cells. Read the following text and be prepared to answer questions on it. Create a risk assessment for a class trip to a theater. So um, I actually got these examples from ChatGPT. And um, I'm a firm believer that really all the educational tools that are out there, um, minus some of the interactivity, um, the, the tools that actually have student interaction, other than that, you can use ChatGPT or a, a large language model to essentially um, as your main AI. So you don't have to buy all these fancy tools. You don't have to go and purchase every educational tool that's out there. You're going to get most of your um, robust use and 
uh, wide range use out of just just a regular a regular platform like Bard, Claude, ChatGPT. Um, I haven't played with Grok yet, but that's out. So um, this is the prep uh, get, or, get, or prompt. Give it a role. So assigning a role, like what what is this? Is the AI taking the role of? Is it a teacher? Is it a editor? So um, here are some examples. You are an experienced teacher who is an expert at creating quizzes that engage and challenge students. You're a qualified examiner who grades English exam papers. You're, a renowned, you're renowned for your impartiality and fair marking. You're an expert in health and safety. You are William Shakespeare. Answer all questions using knowledge Shakespeare had and in his style, which um, that's a little bit more fun. Um, and then three uh, is E, explicit instructions. Um, write five questions, use Bloom's taxonomy to make sure that the questions develop a deeper understanding. Use various question types. Um, you guys will have these slides, so I'm not going to go through and read all of this to you. I want to get into actually playing. Um, and then four, set precise parameters. So write this in 100 words with a reading age of 11 years old or a great, at this grade level. Format this with headings, subheadings, and bullet points. This is one of my favorite things to do. So if I'm looking for a vocabulary list and I, I paste the article in ChatGPT, I'll say, uh, give me a one paragraph summary, um, pull 10 vocabulary words, bold them, give the definition, um, and then uh, break, break, the, break the article into an outline. And um, I, can, I can tell it to bold these headings or, or do anything like that. Um, write in shorter sentences. So I personally do a lot of writing, um, a lot of social media marketing. Um, I use the free version. I have not upgraded to the paid version because I do a lot of professional development around ChatGPT. And most educators entering, uh, they don't have the paid version and they're not going to pay for it. So I don't want to teach, uh, I guess, features and functions that not everyone would have access to. Um, so all of these, all of these letters actually generated prepare to wield the power well with, the the prompt, with the Debbie with the Debbie teacher work list. So all, all of the, dang it, what just happened? I'm having some technical difficulties here. I, I do have 38 slides, but I promise I'm not going to go through all of these. So. But we'll be able to see, you'll all be able to see them when I email you, them. Yeah. To, I always give more part. than I'm ever going to get through. So um, Adobe Firefly, real quick, I'm going to go into Adobe Firefly. So all these letters, P-R-E-P, -E like if you're teaching acronyms, um, I know Oreo is a popular acronym for, for writing. Oh, uh, Terry, it's, it's okay. All you got to do is pick one thing that I'm throwing at you, and I'm going to break it down real simple in a second and just try it. So... For lettering, so Adobe Firefly, they have text to image, generative fill, and text effects. Um, there's there's more generative recolor. I use text to image for the background images in my slide deck, and then I use text effects for that lettering. So all I did was I I come into Adobe Firefly, I just typed in prep as my text, and I said metallic um, steampunk lettering. I typed enter, and then it gave me nice, like, steampunk looking, like, World World of Warcraft-y. I wanted it to kind of look like uh, the stuff from from um, from World of Warcraft to give it that old, like, middle-aged feel. So this is just a simple way of, of using. You can, you can do bread. You can have bread or toast balloons, wires, like what, whatever theme, bundle of electrical wires. And these are sample prompts. So they always have sample prompts. You have your, your shapes, your fonts, and then your main colors. So for the backgrounds, I use text to image. And this is, this just saves my frustration of trying to find the perfect image to match what I'm, what I'm saying. So I just went in and I put World of Warcraft themed classroom. I might have put with computers. I don't remember. 
But um, I was playing around with the same prompt in Mid Journey. I play with multiple images. So there's Canva has one built in. There's Adobe Firefly. There's Dolly. And then there's um, Mid Journey. But here's here's some examples here. So you can you can pull them up. You can change your images, the shape or the size, landscape, portrait, square, widescreen. I typically do widescreen. I just hit generate again. It's going to change the shape. So now I know my images are, are going to match the size of my slideshow. Amanda, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Uh, so I know Canva uh, text to image is available for students. Is that the case with um, Firefly as well? Do you know? Um, yes. Okay. I believe so. Um, don't. You, don't quote you on it. Well, don't we'll quote me on it, but I believe so. I've seen I've seen other educators using it with their students, so okay. I'm 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 assuming so. Um, but worst case, if it's not a Canva text to image, definitely is. If mm -hmm. Adobe Firefly is not, um, awesome. you can use it in your when you're generating slides. Yeah. So, um, going back to prep and edit, I'm just gonna click in here. Um, this is an example of a syllabus, and this is, this is the prompt that I use. So the P, design a syllabus for. This is the prompt for your class, for my English class. You are an experienced English teacher who aims to provide students with a comprehensive, comprehensive understanding of, and then you just put in the key skills or units that you're going to be going over. So I know I had um, Gothic literature, we had a poetry unit, and I would put those things in. Um, include the course objectives, topics covered, assessment methods, required readings. And again, if you have your required readings, you just take out required required readings and you can add, like add a addendum at the bottom. Required readings are boop, boop, boop. So we read, uh, well, we were supposed to read Ready Player One, but um, I had an angry mob of parents that that it didn't happen. It broke my heart because I had this amazing lesson plan and we we're going to build stuff in VR. Um, so, um, next is P, keep the syllabus between two to three pages. So this, is, again, is the parameters. How do you want the output to be? Use a formal tone and provide a clear timeline for assignment. So now it's going, it's giving me course objectives. It's giving, it's breaking down my units into an outline. It's giving me a clear timeline for these, which again, you can all go and adjust, but, um, and then you can also, um, add a previous syllabus that you had. So after you put in the prep, if you have a syllabus from last year, um, you can you can add that text. Um, make sure you follow the the format of the syllabus or make sure uh, integrate this new information into this syllabus. And from there, it'll start giving you um, modified versions of your previous syllabus to update it for this year. And all of these QR codes work. So this will actually take you to chat GPT version. Um, here's a lesson outline. Um, again, create a lesson for the subject. You are skilled at this. And this is a quadratic equations example. I'm going to sneeze. Ah. Um, yep. Don't put in any personal identif identifiable information. Um, thanks, Catherine. Do not put in your student's full name, their uh, student numbers, or, or any of that. Um, you, you definitely don't want to feed any personal information. Um, to the to the AI. Um, again, icebreakers. I'm an introvert. I hate icebreakers. So I actually had it come up with a introvert friendly um, icebreaker, which I I like. So you can you can see what those would have been um, by clicking on that. And then IEPs. You can develop an IEP with specific learning needs. You can put in the accommodations or the um, the uh, interventions that a student might need or you can ask for it based on um, certain behaviors. Uh, again, not putting in personalized information of your student just to help get an idea of how to cater to that student's personalized needs. And then um, creating your own academic integrity policy, which is basically uh, you come in and, and you can use your previous academic integrity policy. You can put that in and then have it create a paragraph based on AI. And in that, you, in the in the role, you can give it a role of what your stance is on um, on AI. Do you want them to use it for some assignments, no assignments, like whatever your your classroom policy is? 
So um, moving on, we know AI hallucinates. And we know that uh, sometimes it gives us fake references that aren't, they don't exist. So when we're looking at students using um, using chat GPT, I know more is, it's more of a question in high school and in college. Um, we have to kind of edit or, and transform that output that we get because it's going to, it's, there's a chance that it's going to have inaccurate information uh, false references, hallucinations, and also bias. Um, and when we when we think of bias, I will absolutely message you, Mark. When we think of bias, um, AI is biased because it is fed off of the data of our society and our historical um, uh, fabric of our of of our history, basically our history. So we as a society have. Um, Things that have happened that, I mean, w there's systemic racism. There's, um, if you type in a, you know, give me an image of a, a boardroom of CEOs, it's going to turn out a bunch of white males. So we know um, that is a reflection of essentially the data that it's been fed, which was hum which which is human data. So um, when we look at bias, don't be like, oh, the AI is wrong or the AI is biased. No, we as humans are biased. And I want you to keep that in mind um, that it's a mirror on society and it shows us things that we can fix as a human race. I am just, I just keep jumping. Got a little bit of a cold too. Um, and then there's the edit matrix. So this is kind of a guide for um, for students. So we have the questions down at the bottom. How can you determine whether a statement is fact or opinion? Um, and I have this whole activity that I can share if anyone's interested, um, where students actually go through and they create a biography, but they have to use the edit framework, the edit framework to go in and transform the the output and make it their own. They have to do more research. They have to do a sentiment analysis, uh, determine accuracy, go through. Um, highlight facts that come out of it, and then also take those facts and do research and corroborate them with actual sources. So um, it's also teaching uh, media literacy. I'm just going to go this way. I'm not going to read this. You have it in your slides, but it's it's just kind of helps them evaluate if they did a good job with, with the edit step. Um, and then going next, we have to learn to reevaluate assignments and assessments as teachers. Um, I know there's a lot of question around plagiarism, like when we look at student use. So um, I ask, would using GPS be considered cheating? Uh, and my uh, my idea is that in a car, I mean, we're not pirates anymore. I was a pirate back in 2002 when I had to use maps to get to Virginia from Georgia. And I, it took me probably uh, three hours longer than it should have because I'm an idiot with a map. But um, with the GPS and my phone telling me to do it, even though I, I can't make a turn in 600 feet because I, I'm I'm like super bad with directions, it's a lot better. And I'm not three hours late anymore. I'm like an hour um, <laughs> late getting there. <laughs> but now imagine, and for, for um, animated purposes, we're just going to go back and watch that again. So we got the car. This is our student. You know, they're gearing up and revving up into the new year. This student went to standard number one. Let's say the destination point is the end of a project. Standard number one, they get to the stop sign. They do their formative check-in. They nailed it. They moved the stop sign to. Um, in this part of the project, there's another standard we're evaluating, we're looking for. Nailed it. They go to standard three. You know, I don't know about you, but I have students that throw that car into reverse and they go all the way in the last year's standards. So... Um, the the idea here is that uh, ChatGPT for students, if we create prompts that are meant to be interventions to help students get over hurdles, whether it's in the writing process, for edu, there are so many some beginner sites. Um, I can I can do that, Terry. And and I threw this in for Mark. Mark, this is this is what I use. Just the thought of students can use AIs to cheat in school. And then to cheat in college, followed by using it throughout a career. Exactly how is it hurting? How is it hurting them? Um, my response to this is that um, it's educators that are cheating them. If we put our heads in the sand, 
Um, also, um, in regards to plagiarism, uh, we need to shift from looking at AI detectors because even detectors, even ChatGPT, OpenAI said that um, they weren't accurate. And we need to know that for every AI detector, students will have a workaround. I have a I have a ninth grader. I've seen it. I've totally seen it. Um, and and then I know her writing. So if we truly know our students' writing, but ten ways to prevent AI, AI plagiarism is to shift our assessment strategies and our instructions, hands-on activities, regular writing writing workshops, um, complex assignments, which I'm going to show you one in a second. Um, technology creatively, collaborative assignments, citation and referencing practice, that media literacy, getting back to that, and then interactive discussions, um, even with even interactive discussions with AI. Um, but what we need to do is we need to uh, we need to make sure that we're focusing on the process because the process of learning is the learning journey. And that's where the learning happens. They don't just magically get to that product and have all of this knowledge. It was the struggle of the process that um, that got them there. So um, if we don't if we don't watch the process, if we don't value the process of how students learn, if we don't learn how to integrate AI into that process, then um, we're doing a disservice to students by by focusing on a very nearsighted way of, of assessing. We also need to make sure that what we assess equals what we value. What do we want students to leave our class or our schools um, capable of doing? And right now, um, I know you've heard this before, but AI is is it's it's out. It's I mean, it's not going back. Technology is the best we've ever had it, and the, the worst that the students are ever going to have it. So just making sure that uh, our assessments adapt and what we value uh, kind of morphs and grows as technology evolves. So reinventing assignments. Um, I I was. Uh, I got I was fortunate enough to speak at Q in San Diego and uh, Magister was in I, I don't know his real name I'm sorry but he was he was in the session and he was obsessed with my speaking avatar and he was teaching Punic Wars so when we were talking about changing the way we assess our students instead of writing a paper on the Punic Wars he decided to have students create avatars of two characters, two historical figures and have them have a conversation and envision what a conversation would be like using um, primary resources and, and pulling in what they knew and the research that they knew and creating this fictionalized, but um, potentially uh, you know, accurate and hypothetically uh, feasible scenario of the, um, the two characters talking. And this is what it looked like. Can you guys hear that? I, Marcus Terentius Varro, hear you. Speak, but be brief. I promise my father, never be a friend to Rome. Your oaths mean nothing. Messina is Rome's by divine right. Ah. All right, so you guys, you guys have the get the gist of of the uh, reinventing assignments. Um, the next slide I want to share is um, uh, kind of like a a prompt cycle that I created to, for the writing process. So the AI enhanced writing process. So all of these prompts aren't meant for the student to use in one writing activity. Um, they're there as scaffolding. So if you have students who, who get stuck in pre-writing and they just sit there and they, 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 that blank page just gives them anxiety, or if you have students who struggle to, to create an outline or um, who struggle with editing, uh, these prompts in, in, the, in the enhanced writing process, you can laminate them and you can go over and put it on their desk and you can have them use it to kind of go in and help them get jump started on part of the writing process. And um, here's the the whole graphic, and then these are some of the prompts, and it follows the prep, explicit instructions. I didn't use E, so it looks like prep, prep, but it's prep. So you you have these nudge cards. Yeah. I, oh, I like that. I might I might steal that nudge cards. That sounds good. So a little AI nudge. So feedback phase. AI is a peer reviewer analyze feedback from peers, 
And then one of the things that I have done recently, uh, have you guys heard of Otter AI? Otter.ai. If you haven't, um, I went ahead and st started creating a new account. So basically it gives automatic meeting notes and you can take meetings in person as well. You have to check with your acceptable use cases and your district and see if it's okay. But if you're doing parent teacher meetings or if uh, you're doing a team meeting and it's virtual, or if you're doing a team meeting in person, you can take meetings in the room. Um, and you can set up uh, your autopilot to automatically join these meetings. Um, so I would go in, I'm, I'm not going to go through it, but, you know, all meeting invites, it automatically joins, it creates, um, there's a free version. I have the free version. I don't need more. Des desperate student prompt. Yep. I have to write about X. I don't know what to do. Help me. Um, yeah. So that's that's a great use case. And again, there I wanted to focus on chat GPT instead of giving you a million tools because <laughs> because uh, I I think this is it's like the gateway GPT. It's the gateway to AI. Once you get in and you start playing and typing in prompts, then you're gonna see the power of it and then you'll start to venture out into other tools. So um once once I took uh, my otter voice meeting notes, I got this whole transcript. So I was having to schedule PD for a school in Michigan. So I had the entire transcript. I pasted it into ChatGPT, and it has speaker two, speaker one. It doesn't have our, you know, our names. But um, in the in the dashboard, you can click on the speakers. You can listen to it back. It takes screenshots of the screens that's being shared at that time. Um, it gives you keyword highlights. Um, Catherine, am I? I'm, I know it's eight o'clock. Yeah, it, it, well, five o'clock here, but <laughs> oh, sorry, eight o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> ah, that's no, this is, okay. this is great. But um, I I like what you said. Um, and those that you know, if people need to leave, there this is being recorded as well. So that's so that's great. Um, I love what you said. There were a lot of questions about beginners, and I love what you said, Amanda, about Chat GPT. And I I would agree that that's a great first. I think it's a to check out right. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Once you get a feel for for how it's uh, how ChatGPT works, and you you put in that input, you get that output, and you realize that output isn't the end all be all. You can continue to refine it. You can continue to revise your prompt, and you can like take pieces of the outputs together and put them in. You can have you can um, copy and paste some of the output and have it rephrase it or or do a sentiment analysis and ask for it to be more professional or make it more friendly. Um, I always, for social media, I have all my Twitter, all of my Twitter or, or tweets or X's, whatever they're called now. I have chat GPT write it and I always put use emojis. So you, I suck at using emojis. I hate finding them. So it does it for me. And then I copy and paste it in buffer and then I shorten it because it doesn't understand characters. It doesn't always get the number of characters right. And Twitter kind of has that limit or X, sorry, I keep calling it Twitter. But with with the transcript here, summarize, um, you know, give me, what was my original prompt? Um, you are creating professional development for a district of Michigan on the use of artificial intelligence. Using this transcript from a meeting with district leaders on planning professional development, summarize the action items and presentations that need to be built. Um, and then I kept kind of going back and forth with it. And during the call, I would say action items. And um, I would make a list as we were speaking so it, it could pull that out. And um, it gave me a beautiful summary. So it started at nine, it hit it on, on the point of like what the schedule was supposed to be based on the conversation, when the lunch break was, admin tools, prompt crafting, student facing AI tools, and then asynchronous, and asynchronous online course development, engaging the community, future steps. Um, so it was, it was a pretty great start to how I was going to build out the PD and it kind of condensed it for me because me, so if you can tell, I'm a maximalist, I'm not a minimalist, and it's no different with my uh, verbosity. I love to talk, I love words, and my slides are just jam-packed with stuff. And the idea is um, that when you get that, you can kind of read through that on your own time. But when it comes to like planning stuff, and I'm I'm like, sometimes 
phrasing things in the simplest terms are, is the best, and I suck at that. So I always ask ChatGPT to make this more um, succinct or brief, reduce you know my three paragraphs to one. So um, I'll, I'll also use it for that for emails too. I'll put in an email and say, respond to this, and I'll put like bullet points of what I want to say, and it crafts the email for me which saves me a ton of time because I, you wouldn't believe how many emails I have to send in a day. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to do is share this. I'm going to share this link in the chat with you. So you have access to this. You can go through, you can dig through. And again, the best thing that you can do is um, just get in and play. And uh, don't worry if you don't know what you're doing because you don't know how you you don't know what you're doing until you get in and and you play. So that's such great advice. I love that. And if you are listening on your phone or you're watching on Facebook and you're not able to get that link, know that all registrants um, to the webinar are going to be um, uh, provided with an email that'll have all the links as well. So you'll be able to access it there also. Um, I I there's just such a wealth of information that was shared um, by Adam and by you, Amanda. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's <laughs> fine. I think people, people are still here. So they they were excited to hear everything. I think that was excellent. Um, and so really do want to thank you. Um, you're getting thank yous in the chat as well. I just wanted to close off um, by letting everyone know um, the next steps of how um, CDE uh, will continue to support you. So you'll all be sent an email containing links to the CDE AI resources that were mentioned, a link to this presentation, um, uh, Amanda's link, um, resources that were mentioned in today's webinar, and a feedback form. And also, by uh, because people have asked, uh, if you need a certificate that you attended, um, there will be a, a way to request that as well. Um, the next, um, and this information will be in that email as well, but the next, our February offerings are going to be about accessibility and personalization. Um, and that's going to be excellent. We're going to have some um, educators that really focus on um, universal design and inclusivity um, and special needs. And then um, on the February 20th, we are going to have some people from uh, industry talking about college and career and what, um, even someone from Google, um, and as well as uh, um, some from the tech industry and education industry uh, in Oakland. So going to be great. We're really excited. And um, we uh, also uh, in the, the um, if you sometimes people say, how do I know when these are happening? If you join our listserv, you will always get a weekly email that will tell you when they're coming up. And so that um, information will be in the email as well. I want to thank all of you for all that you do. Thank you um, for the thanks to our speakers. Thank you. Um, we are here because we want to support you. They are here because they um, love supporting educators as well. So thank you and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. Appreciate all of you.